we've seen how to make a single plot with matplotlib. In this video, I want to show how to make multiple plots. And I just want to warn you in advance that what we do in this video isn't going to look very good. And we'll talk in a later video about some ways to make it look a little better. But right now, I just want to get across the syntax. So I want to show two different things. First, I want to show how to plot these six, I guess, different plots for x between 0 and 2 pi on a single axis. And you might think I have a typo and it should be axis, but I think axis is how they write it in matplotlib. And that will be pretty straightforward. We're going to do it using a for loop. And then later in this video, we're going to show how to put this onto six different axes. So first, let's just do some imports. So import numpy as np and import matplotlib.pyplot as plt. Those are the standard abbreviations for these two. And so uh, let's, let's just like get started with how we're going to do it. So we're going to say big x equals plt dot subplots to start. This is going to be for the single axes version. And then we're going to have a for loop. And I want to cycle through all of these different values of k. So uh, let me just copy and paste this. And I'm going to make it into a list. OK, good. And so then we're going to do for, or let me call it k list instead of k. And then we're going to say for k in k list. And so think of these as different coefficients that go with the x. So we're going to like be speeding up how fast this cosine of x is moving as we go from 1 up to 10. And I sort of specifically wanted it to be a kind of random collection of numbers. I didn't want it to be something we could make using range or a range. Okay, and so for each of these, I want to define the function cosine of kx. And so let's do that using a lambda function. So let's say f equals lambda x and then np dot cosine. K okay, cosine by itself doesn't exist in Python. K times x. Okay, if you just write kx, Python is going to look for a variable named kx. So you really need to have this multiplication sign. So think of this as describing a function, and then we're saving that function with the name f. K and f is going to change each time we go through this for loop. Okay, each, each loop in the for loop is going to change what this f is. And I want to specify like the x coordinates and the y coordinates. So let's specify the x coordinates outside of the for loop. So remember that the way matplotlib or matlab for that matter plots uh a plot like this is it just connects these various points with straight lines. And so I want to say, like, what x coordinates do I want? And I'm going to use lin space. And I'll say 0, 2 times pi, 100. And you see what I've done wrong here? Pi also doesn't exist in Python, so I have to do np.py. OK, good. And it's very reasonable and, and wise to be worried about these both being called x, but when it's the parameter inside a function, that's not going to overwrite anything that's uh, defined outside of the function. Okay. Unlike if I changed this to x, that would overwrite this x. Okay. And the, there's no like great way to know in advance. I just know from experience that using the same name inside of a function is fine but using the same name as the thing, the uh, variable we're using in a for loop, that is not fine. That would erase this x if I had x here. OK, so, uh, so I have x, the x coordinates that I want to plot. I have that defined outside of the for loop. The y coordinates, they're going to change based on what the function is. So that needs to be defined inside the for loop. So I'll say y equals, and I can just say f of x. Okay, and this will get it extended across all 100 values of the x vector, or the x array. 
Okay, and then what we're going to do is we're going to say x.plot xy. And it's not going to look very good, but that's okay. The point is just to see this syntax. So it, it would be reasonable to think that as you're going through the for loop, maybe the, um, the previous plots get erased each time you go through the for loop, but that's not what happens. In this case, the plots that get drawn on top of each other. And as I said, it's not going to look very good. Okay, but this at least shows you the syntax for how to, how to plot, in this case, six different plots on the same axes. So next, let me show you how to plot them on separate axes. And so let me, let me copy this for now. And so here, let me look at the documentation for this subplots function in PyPlot. I'm going to do help plt.subplots. And so notice the first two arguments are number of rows and number of columns. And usually I've just been leaving it blank. So they've been getting these default values of one by one. Okay, that's like saying there's just one axis in this figure. But the reason it's called subplots is because this is really designed to allow you to have multiple subplots in the same figure. So I'm going to put... There are six total plots I want to make, and I'm going to say it's going to be three by two. Okay, so that's three rows by two columns. In a lot of the arguments we've used in Python so far, you've had to use a tuple like this, but here it's not asking for a tuple. It's asking for the number of rows and number of columns separately. Okay, so I really want these to be two separate arguments, two subplots. Okay. And then let me just change this name to AXS for a second. And let me show you what happens when we do this. So here there are three rows, two columns. And you have a guess what type of thing AXS is. I found it pretty surprising when I first saw what it was. So AXS, it's going to hold the different axes objects. And it's a NumPy array. And I found that really surprising that these axes objects were held in a NumPy array. You have a guess what the dimensions are of this NumPy array? It's the same dimensions as our figure is going to be, so 3 by 2. And so, for example, in position 1, 1, that's going to correspond to this axis argument here. Okay, and so we're going to have to do a, a couple different things. So we want to we want to iterate through k list. So k list is these coefficients one, two, three, five, seven, ten. And so I want to plot cosine of one x here, cosine of two x here and so on. And so I'd like to get access to a flattened version of this NumPy array. So, uh, so let me look at axs.reshape. And if I write it as negative one, that's turning it into just a one-dimensional array. And you can see it's this one-dimensional array. There's only one set of brackets, and it contains these six objects in it. And so there's a better way to do this, but I think just to keep the video a little simpler for now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say for i in range, and let's say length of k list. And let me call this flattened version axs flat. Okay, so the nice thing about this axs flat is I'm able to use some, some notation like so. Let me show you. I'm allowed to use some notation like axs flat brackets four. Okay, and for example, if I do axs flat brackets four dot plot three one four. Okay, and then I look at fig. Well, we're thinking of this as zero, one, two, three, four. So the plot should show up here in the figure. 
Okay, and this is just giving me the y coordinates. So x equals 0, y equals 3, x equals 1, y equals 1, x equals 2, y equals 4. So this 3, 1, 4, if you only give plot one argument, they're assumed to be the y values. Okay, and so what I like about this AXS flat is that I can use indexing like bracket 4 for this. Whereas if I were tr to try to do AXS brackets 4, it'll say that's out of, out of bounds because there are only three, three spaces in this zeroth dimension. Okay, great. And so eventually we'll see some better way to do this using what's called enumerate, but let's, let's just do it this way for now. So I is going to go 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay, and then I can say k equals k list bracket i. And let's say x equals axs flat brackets i. And so what did this do? This got me the six different values of k. This got me the six different axes. And then just like before, we plotted along those axes. Okay. I think that's where I'll stop this video, but I'll show how to make some improvements to this in the next video.